Hello folks, health warning, this is going to be a boring video, it's going to be mostly me sitting here in the same spot talking. So if you don't like that stuff, click pause, go up to the search bar, type in funny cats, press enter, and you'll be taken safely away from this garbage. So we've got a little video for you today, or a short by my standards, which means usually less than about 30 minutes of boredom, uh, about our Tesla Model 3 drive unit board. So as you will see there, the board or the inverter is back out of the car. We've got a little uh, mod wire on there. So what's been going on? Uh, and why are we back on the bench again for testing when you would have last seen me testing in the car, getting the wheels spinning and all that good stuff. So uh, there's been a lot going on uh, over the last few weeks. So I thought I would update you all as to what's happening. So as you may recall, um, they're leading up to me putting the inverter in the car. I was running the motor on the bench, but I had two major problems going on. The first was the web interface, uh, whether I had the one directly plugged into the PCB or was using the Lilygo TCAN board to connect externally via CAN or indeed actually Dave's open inverter CAN tool. Uh, we were having problems uh, because it was just unstable. Uh, it wouldn't save the CAN map. It was generating all kinds of weird data. Uh, so the first part of what was causing that was, of course, me and my pathetic attempts to write high-level software. I had uh, generated... Um, I guess uh, what would, I, I, I had generated a buffer overrun exploit in the open inverter code. So once the guys spotted that, got that patched, uh, that fixed some of it. But there was a deeper problem going on. So in the OEM uh, Tesla setup, they run their resolver exciter at 10 kilohertz and they run their PWM uh, frequency at 10 kilohertz as well. Uh, we run uh, the closest we can do with the, with the open inverter system is to run the PWM at 8.8 .8 kilohertz. Now, I had tried two years ago when I was still working on a little mod board to run the Tesla resolver at the normal open inverter frequency of 4.4 kilohertz, and it really did not like that one bit. We're getting clipping and waveform distortion and all kinds of unpleasantness. So I spoke to Johannes, and he came up with a few lines of code changing that let us run the exciter and the pwm both at 8.8 .8 kilohertz and it just worked away fine there for the testing i was do doing so fast forward now to the pcb project and uh, did the very same thing now what was wrong with that was that in making those few changes we were altering the timings within how the uh, main control loop in the open inverter system works uh, we were basically having the time that the processor had to accomplish certain tasks now it's not stupid it won't um it won't deprioritize things like the PWM generation, but what it will do is it will drop out things like the terminal, which is our web interface. It will drop out CAN frames. It'll basically shed what, whatever it needs to shed in order to maintain correct PWM generation. And that's fine. 
but obviously now um, the aim of the game here is going to be running the inverter via CAN and so we're going to be sending and receiving CAN we're going to be using the LilyGo board for external CAN we're going to be using Dave's open inverter CAN tool um, for communicating with it and all that good stuff so something had to be done to fix that and it's far beyond me to accomplish it so Dave again stepped up and did some investigation and long story short too late he basically came up with a way to use one of the spare hardware timers to generate a 8.8 kilohertz resolver exciter frequency uh, while letting the main control loop run at 4.4 but also critically not altering the way in which the main control loop samples the feedback sine and cosine from the resolver to generate the rotor angle so just today i took the inverter out of the car did the mod loaded the code set it back up on the bench made zero changes to anything this is how well the, he got this made zero changes to any of my angle setups or anything plugged it in pressed the throttle spun up as you saw there um, so we now have the benefit of a hardware generated 8.8 um, kilohertz resolver exciter in there so that's wonderful obviously on the v2 board now i've got a wire on there so there's going to be a v3 the three so with a bit of luck the v3 three uh is going to be the one that does the job for me uh so it'll still be a few weeks until i can push the button to order that um i'm going to put this inverter that we have here back in the car so i can conti continue building up and testing and all that and i'll have a much longer and much more exciting video featuring plasma cutting and tig welding and high voltage junction boxes and getting scammed for a battery and all kinds of fun stuff for you so stay tuned for that but today's boredom is just to give you that short update uh, so things are still very much moving along and i'm very happy um that we've got everything now working with this it's doing the can mapping properly it's doing the terminal properly software where updates via wi-fi via can all that stuff's just working away fine now because as far as the control loop is concerned it could be running it could be running any motor it's not concerned about any of that what the current the current just goes out it just says put the current out and the current makes things happen and that's it so uh do have one more thing to show you before we wrap up this short don't stay with us yes folks it's another drive unit uh this one came up recently um i had asked ev breakers if they had any kind of a like a a damaged or a low cost front drive unit and they came up with this one for me uh that's had some kind of dubious welding repairs and when i say dubious obviously they you know it's much better aluminium tig welding than i could ever achieve but uh you know nonetheless um this unit came in at a very good price which i obviously availed of and wasted some of your hard-earned cash on it um the reason is i wanted a front drive unit uh so we can get the inverter out of this guy and number one see what the configuration that's been sent from the elon brain to the uh, gate drivers uh because apparently from what i've seen going around these drive units use igbt's in the power stage 
rather than the silicon carbide MOSFETs that we've in our uh, rear drive unit inverters. Uh, so I'm going to be getting the inverter off this guy fairly soon. Obviously this is an induction motor as well. You can see it's kind of a shorter sort of a thing on the back. So we will be running uh, not only the not only the, the rear drive units um, with this board but also the front. Now again it'll be just we'll be using the sign firmware on the front and the FOC on the rears. So this is just some very bad screen filming for you. Um, this is our mapped can, so ID 190 hex or 400 decimal that's being sent from the inverter at the minute that contains the data uh, that we'd be sending to the zombie verter or indeed any other um, system that we wish to send data from our inverter to. Uh, if I go into my terminal here we can go for example OIC dump all. We get a full list of our uh, parameters and if we just type OIC it'll give us a list of all of the um, things that it can do for us. So quite a wonderful uh, simple but very good um, yeah very good uh, thing that is now available also for open inverter um, boards and systems and so on so there you have it folks maximum boredom minimum clicks um, like I said, next stage now, I'm going to get that inverter back into the car and we'll continue building up the car. And my aim is, all going well, to be able to drive the car uh, within a few weeks. But, you know, me, there's, oh, there's always some nonsense. So, But fingers crossed uh, that will actually happen. And uh, once I can drive the car, then we'll be able to uh, get some boards, get some V3 boards um, in. I'll get one in the car, get some out to beta testers, and then we'll be um, hopefully able to offer folks the open inverter uh, board for the Model 3 front and rear drive units so uh, that's about it I'll catch you in the next episode when hopefully I'll have some more exciting stuff to show you uh, until then don't forget to give all this garbage a solid thumbs down uh, do check out the links in the description to github and the forum and all that where you can keep up on what's going on uh, one of the things that I very much like about the the open source way of doing things is that this is it. I you know I don't I don't hide anything. You can see exactly what goes on here. Mistakes, successes, um, the whole lot. Uh, I don't I don't hold with um, I don't hold with this thing of. Um, hiding behind whatever you want to call it you know it's just what's the what, what's the point um, we we need we need to be able to work on the stuff that we have we need to be able to understand it so that's it all right I better not go on a rant because that would only make the video longer than a short 30 minutes so Catch you on the next one, folks, and um, until next time, happy hardware exciter generation.